Now, old games are better than new games. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't been genuinely excited for a new video game release in a very long time. GTA 6? That is two years ago with Elden Ring because from uh, software yeah, yeah. is just that good of a company and they haven't let me down in over 10 years. So, of course, I was pretty pumped for that one. Now, that doesn't mean that I haven't enjoyed a few recent games. I definitely have. They were just games that I didn't have on my radar or wasn't particularly excited for ahead of their release. But games Yo. that I decided to try out and ended up having a bit of fun Yo. with. Some of which is it is it really that the, the new games just are cluttered with battle passes and microtransactions, loot boxes, and and like all that? I I can't I can't say that that's the reason why new games are not good. I feel like I feel like the new games that come out, they're they're not supposed to come out when they do. Right? If they would have just sat here, it's all about money, of course. It's the amount of money they can make from from early access and stuff. But like putting out a game that that is early access and then you know releasing the full game ten years later, I think that's I think that's just so like so greedy man and and then you up the price after it's been in early access for 10 years which have been remakes of older titles but i'll get to those in a minute if you've been watching but but like i i think it's i think it's the story stories people come up came up with back then I don't think I don't think it was like they took their time or whatever i think i think it was like the campaigns and everything like People, people harp down on a good story, and that's all it took to sell a, like a good game, or make a a game good, was was a good story. But like now, a game is like soulless garbage. Watching my channel for the past couple of years, you know I'm someone that appreciates the finer details in games, rich environmental storytelling, beautiful art direction over graphical fidelity, compelling narratives with great dialogue, and badass memorable characters. And I've realized over the last few years that all of these things are found primarily in older games. The occasional new game releases with a few of these elements, but games that check every single box on this list are games very like rare. Dishonored, Bioshock, the Batman Arkham series, Skyrim, and so on. All games that are well over 10 years old. And one of the most important reasons older games like this have a leg up over recent titles is that they're safe from the infestation of social politics and woke ideology. That's that's what it, it has to be. That it has to be that it, it like in games they were allowed to be creative. In today's day and age, you're not allowed to be creative like that, like you were in the past, right? That that plays a huge part in how and how the games that we get, um, whether they're good or bad. Now that doesn't mean games weren't political. Games have always been political to a degree. The Bioshock games, for example, are certainly political, with the first game being a critique of objectivism and capitalism, and yeah. also just a widespread critique of authoritarianism. Bioshock 2 is a critique of socialism and collectivism, and Bioshock Infinite is a critique of religious extremism. And I've never played any of the Bioshocks. A lot of these critiques are inherently left-wing. Some of them, like the case in Bioshock 2, might be considered a critique from a right-wing point of view, but mostly the games are left wing. Yet there's a reason these games aren't considered woke by most people. And that's because they leave it up to the player to be smart enough to interpret and understand what the game is trying to say. And that is, that's a wrap bro. That's why, that's why old games are better. It left it up to the players. It left it up to the players instead of it shifting your narrative to where you have to believe one thing and you, you lose that like freedom to, to interpret it how you want. The game isn't afraid to also critique its own message at times and show their own weakness. They weren't inserting modern day talking points and TikTok ideologies into the character design and dialogue. It allows the player to try and see things from all angles. This is why Andrew Ryan, for example, is a fantastic villain. The same way people talk about Thanos from the Marvel films. Yeah. There's a layer of understanding where the villain's coming from. Some level of relatability. Maybe they aren't entirely wrong with their thinking, but they went about things in the wrong way. And that's how you can make they the went game too far without being woke, or its opposite. Plenty of older games had a lot of left-wing undertones and messages, like Fallout New Vegas. But is that game considered woke? 
Most <laughs> people would say no. In fact, if you like some of these older left-leaning games in 2024, the current day woke crowd calls you a right-wing fascist, oh, okay. which makes absolutely no sense. But that's how far modern day social politics has declined. And politics are now like Bioshock or New Vegas to the modern left wing slop of the last few years. You really start to see how one of these things is a creative, artistic, political commentary. And the other is straightforward propaganda force fed into every facet of the game design. So when people say they want politics out of games, I don't fully agree with that. I like games with political ideas. Most games have always had them. But it has to be done right. Yeah. And no, that doesn't mean it has to be politics I agree with. You just have to do it in a classy, realistic, and non-preachy way. And so they're not shoving it down your throat? Turning you into the throat goat, man. That, that's why. That's why, bro. It, it, they force feed it to you. Like, it, it, they force it on you. As for social politics, this is where I think the problem truly lies. There's always been gay characters in video games. Yeah. There's always been female protagonists. And, and there's, there's not a problem with that, bro. Protagonists and characters. It, there's not a problem with that either. It, it doesn't make the game bad or good because it has this, like, this whole woke garbage, bro. Yeah, it's not, it's not that. It's not that. It, bro. Oh, God. But if you read the mainstream gaming news outlets lately, you'd think that there's never been anything but white dudes in video games until Super right. Baby Inc. No, no, he's agreeing with us. He's agreeing with us. It's not about this. There has always been. There has always been gays, people of color, and, and, uh, what else did he say? Uh, I'm losing it. Regardless, there's always been in video games. Uh, female protagonists. I I didn't mean to forget that. Uh, but, like, there's always been, like, Tomb Raider, right? And it doesn't make it a bad game if they have those in in the game that they're making. It's when it, they force feed it to you, bro. It, it, it's... ...in and saved the industry. But, of course, that's not true, and any real gamer already knows this. The difference is, when we had a gay character in a game, they were just a gay character. A female character was just a female character yes. a black guy a chinese guy a mexican there's no problem with this no games forever but what's different nowadays is how they're treated now we must race or gender swap characters. oh my replace a strong white male protagonist with a toxic masculinity based female character with probably the most impossible physique for a biological woman replace a persian prince with a black guy that has a 2024 haircut in a sequel for a game named after the main character, why not play as a black female FBI agent instead? In right? fact, Remedy put out a teaser trailer for Alan Wake 2 several years ago showing Saga Anderson finding Alan and she was a white female. So they race swapped that character partway through development. Likely thanks Isn't to that crazy? money rolling in to hire Sweet Baby Inc. Hades 2 race swaps various Greek gods and even gives one of them vitiligo for some reason. And the only time they race swap to a white guy is when it's a villain, like Larry Chang in the new Dead Rising remake. Characters once straight are now being confirmed as gay, transgender, or yeah, non it, like it, and like what does it matter? What does it matter, bro? It, it's a video game. It's a video game, bro. I I don't even know why I get so heated about this. It, it probably because I play them all day obvious to anyone who isn't burying their head in the sand that this is a deliberate attack on masculinity no. men, and biological women some people want to be willfully ignorant on this topic people want to deny reality but this is exactly what's happening game companies are concerned with reaching quotas and performing well on their esg scorecards in order to so esg scorecards should just be done Bro, uh, like, they should just be done. Just make the make the game, make the movie, whatever. Just make it good, bro. I don't care what's in it. Just make it good. Instead of sitting here trying to check off all your all your checklist of like your 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 checkboard of of uh what what things that the the corporation that does the whole whatever ENGs they they need to be like oh hold on hold on. You're missing you're missing a strong masculine woman right there. You need to add that in. 
Otherwise, you won't. You won't meet uh, the hundred percent threshold, and your game will never do good. Cure more BlackRock money, and I just want to ask those of you that defend ESG and companies oh, like ESG. Baby Inc. Do you think that BlackRock, largest asset manager in the world, trillions of dollars in assets, buying up all the homes? Do you think Larry Fink and BlackRock are funding ESG and DEI out of the goodness of their hearts? Or could they be pushing all this garbage for another reason? Most people who know about BlackRock know the horrible practices they're involved in. I recommend looking into it. So do you really think that funding ESG at almost every company they invest in no. is being done because they're such a moral and ethical company? No! Or more likely because they want to poison the minds of the people with corrupt and destructive ideologies. They don't need more money, they just want to change the narrative to whatever suits their benefit for power. And it's bad, it's bad for consumers, man. Like, dude, it, you, you understand why, why it's bad? When you make a game that's centered around these scores, people don't play the game. And they're like, oh, they won't play it because there's a strong female lead character. Or there's a, there's a, some, some person of color that is just the, the main character. That's why they're not playing it. No, it's because it's garbage. It's garbage. Bro, all of it center is like narrowed down to, it's just bad. It's bad storytelling. It's a bad game no one wants to play it it's just garbage like quit quit releasing garbage and people will play the game so all you or need to watch the movie is why would the most corrupt and evil corporation in the world be funding woke social ideologies in all the companies they invest in which unfortunately extends all the way down to video game companies but all right that's enough about these fucking dorks let's move on to remakes one of Yo, the what's up, man? popular trends in the gaming industry of the last few Hold years up. is the remake. And they come in the form of reforges, <laughs> reduxes, resurrections, rebirths, collections, remasters, reboots, or simply just the remake. This stands as just L another ads. example that shows older games were better and the game publishers know it too. There's at least three reasons why the remake is so popular nowadays with AAA publishers. Number one, the majority of AAA studios are creatively <laughs> bankrupt. Not every AAA game released over the last few years have been bad, but no. I'm not hesitant to say that most of them have been extremely average to below average. Even some of the Especially for a remake. Especially for a remake, bro. Like uh, franchises okay. have been receiving underwhelming sequels that often achieve mediocre sales. Number two, it's easier to remake a game than to develop an idea from scratch. Yeah. With a lot of these remakes, the games it's, are it's lazy, the ground bro. up, which, yes, is no easy task. It takes a lot of time and work M4? to create assets and overhaul world Yo. designs inside of a new engine, but the groundwork has already been laid. The story has already been written. The world building is done. The structure of the game is set. All that needs to happen is pushing forward on recreating it all inside a new engine. And it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad. If they wouldn't make... 10 remakes 10 remakes bro what what is the purpose what is the purpose of that why do we need 10 of the same game all getting charged at 70 dollar price tags now it's the same game but all they're doing are applying newer graphics but then they're charging 60 extra dollars like it blows my mind which again, and people those... and people that buy these games they're feeding into the idea that if they just remake a game, they can make more money than designing and creating an entirely new game. Take a lot of work. It's why these remakes take several years to develop, but it is still easier than a brand new idea. Number three, nostalgia. they can pump them out. The gaming industry yeah. and Hollywood for that matter have all been focused on selling nostalgia for the better part of a decade now. And nostalgia is certainly a powerful thing and is almost a guarantee to see a return on investment if the product is good. And aren't they doing this with Spider-Man? Aren't they making a whole brand new, like, uh, trilogy of Spider-Man? Aren't they, aren't they, like, doing that again? They're remaking the whole storyline from scratch and starting over? Some of the highest selling games of the last few years, though, have been remakes, collections, and remasters. Even for games that don't need it. Yeah, and like, of the what? That it isn't just nostalgia or flashy photorealistic graphics that sells remakes so easily. 
I think older games are just better. It's the story. It's the older Keys story. Why remakes like RE4, System Shock, Dead Space, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2? <laughs> yeah. Woo. Why these games are so popular with gamers? Number one, a lot of these older games are no. linear. With a lot of recent remakes, they're games that are but usually pretty linear by design. Linear, but peak storytelling. Linear, but peak storytelling, man. That, that's literally what, what older games were. The Resident Evil games, Dead Space, System Shock. These are the types of games that are getting remakes most often. They aren't yeah. massive open worlds. They're slowed down, straightforward, narrative, simple games. Casual games. games. And there's a lot of value in games like this. After the transition to open world, I think a lot of us really started to miss when games were more linear like this. And I wish more original titles were linear in this way as well. Like a new Splinter Cell game that is an open world and is a proper mission based stealth action video game, that would be perfect. Number yeah. two, better narratives. Simply put, the narratives of these older games are far better than what studios are capable of nowadays. They weren't right. restricted by ESG checklists or DEI hiring. And that's why, that's why people keep harping about the old Modern Warfare 2 campaign. Because it was, it was literally, like, it, it, the campaign was so good that you shift, you shift to now where a Call of Duty campaign is just garbage fed to you, uh, like prison food. It's because the old, the old campaigns are so good because they're not sitting here like he said they're not they're not locked behind a e e s g checklist that they have to uh, like uh, to be in today's day and age i wouldn't even be surprised if they just replaced ghost with some masculine woman now they had truly <laughs> talented writers that knew how to tell a story in a unique medium such as video games instead of trying to copy marvel film tropes and dialogue Stories and dialogues could be a bit more edgy. They could be offensive. And nowadays, a lot of games are very hyper sanitized. I don't want to give them any ideas. So overly nice and cringy. And unfortunately, some of these remakes ended up getting their narratives, characters, and dialogue tweaked to cater to the sensitive crowd. Oh, God. Even the remakes can't just be recreations. They also have to nope. be updated for modern audiences. Number three, unique and memorable characters, worlds, and gameplay. So many of these older titles had such memorable characters that game studios just have a hard time of trying to replicate. The worlds they created are genuine. Yo, why are you heavy rolling? More and immerse yourself in. The gameplay is usually pretty simple and straightforward, prioritizing fun and immersion over complex and unnecessary additions. So these are the reasons I believe remakes are so popular. The old yeah. game design style is really enticing right now. However, there are several downsides to remakes, like with the writing. Unfortunately, most of them end up removing a lot of the charm and disrupting Bro. the lore and world building in favor of realistic graphics or, again, to conform to modern day social politics. Like the Demon Souls remake, replacing this statue of a samurai knight with a generic knight, for example. And Demon Souls remake has tons of examples just like this. Wait, what? Or the Resident Evil remakes having tons of removed content. Changing character designs in multiple games to ensure they're as ugly as possible now. Oh, removing anything that could be considered sexual or provocative. It's funny how game developers suddenly became these gigantic prudes when it comes to attracting- And they don't even play the games that they're releasing. Oh my god, they don't even play them. So why are they making them for, for their, their, uh, their critique? They don't even play the games they're releasing. Why are they making them and centering them around their own checklist, bro? Instead of the people's checklist. Active female characters in games. The they consumer. 85 year old pastor level of prudeness when they do things like remove Miranda's butt. Oh, you can't like, bro, why? Show us the ass, man. Like, what's the problem? Mass Effect remake. Or turning Joanna the Babe from Perfect Dark into this chiseled man-like specimen. Uh, or Gridlock! Croft, looking Gridlock. like that. Christ. So long story short, yes, older games are better than new ones. Studios know this, which is why they keep trying to cash in on remakes. Gamers know this, which is why a lot of older games... They keep trying to cash in, but they don't know why we love them.
they don't know why we love the old games. We still have more players than new releases, and why remakes are still what get people the most excited. And every one of you know this because you can see the social politics destroying the hobby yep, you yep. love. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all. Yo, W video, man. He really gets it. This guy gets it, man. Yo, he, he understands. He understands why games are bad now. And that is why old games are better than new games.